Hey, what's up? Here's some things I made in Godot at the end of 2024. The first up is Pugno Diem. So I've been jamming, and this was made for the Godot Wild Jam with two other guys. Shout out Pseudo Hero and Lazarus. The theme was Tower, and the idea here is that God has just destroyed the Tower of Babel, and all the workers have been turned into these crystal angel guys, and you're just really mad about that. So you're making your way up the tower using this dash attack ability to uh, eventually punch God in the face. I've been trying to work on teams more just to get that experience working with other people, and I thought this one went pretty well. I did most of the programming, Pseudo Hero did the game design, the level design, and designed and modeled the enemies, and Lazarus helped out a lot with the GitHub, he did the sound design, and added a few achievements. The game is heavily inspired by Neon White, which I haven't actually played, but the idea is that you can speedrun it, and the levels have multiple paths through them, so you want to play it a couple times to figure out what the optimal path is, and then just try to get through the enemies as quickly as possible. I set up a whole serialization system to track best times and other stats, and it was just a good exercise of Godot's 3D capabilities and just getting getting the game together, getting that complete package. After that, I started fleshing out the systems in a side project called Broken Sun. This is an immersive sim game that I have in mind, and in case you don't know, immersive sims are games like Thief or Dishonored or Deus Ex. I just really like a good save scummy stealth em up. So that's what I'm trying to make. So far, and in no particular order, there's the basics of this inventory system set up. Objects can be different sizes, some of them can stack, and they can be stored in containers. There's a serialization system built for quick saving. There's only a few odd tools in the game so far, like this monitor in the left hand that can be synced up with security cameras so you can see what they're seeing. The security cameras can see the player, but they're light sensitive, so when you turn out the lights, the security camera won't see you. That's when it turns green. I'm imagining a lot of lurking around in heavy shadows and working your way through unlit superstructure. So you've got a flashlight, but I also started playing around with shaders and got this neat night vision shader working. It uses a combination of what the camera sees and depth texture to allow you to see in the dark. Besides that, there's a whole bunch of basic and not-so-basic movement system stuff to work out. I really like the style of Dishonored and other arcane games. They crouch when you're approaching something that can be crouched under, and you can mantle over things really easily, and it's just a very fluid system. Like in a lot of immersive sims, I want you to be able to upgrade your player and change your play style. So I started implementing a few of these, like jumping higher and wall running. There's still a lot of work to be done, but I've got the basic framework in place, and I'm really liking how this one's coming along. It turns out that Godot Wild Jam is a monthly thing. It starts on the second Friday of every month, and that same team of us from earlier attempted to do it again. The theme this time was Reflections, and our game was going to be called Mirrored Echoes, but you can probably tell by how I'm saying this all that it kind of fell through, and yeah. In our defense, it was the week after the election. I was still in a mind to jam though, and had allotted a few more days for it, so I decided to start another random side project where I adapted that multi-camera CCTV setup that I made in Unity over to Godot and started on this mall cop idea that I have where, you know, you're a mall cop. That handheld monitor is back, and I added a key ring because I thought it might be fun if you have to sort through your keys to open a door. As of Godot 4.3, the IK system is deprecated, and it might have something to do with how the bone is acting in the forearm when the hand reaches over the head, but I really like it there when you pair it with the sidearm. The door is open by clicking and dragging with the mouse, which I hope is pretty intuitive. If we go over here, I'll show you the IK walking system that I came up with. The character model is just pulled from Mixamo, and this was just a good way to get familiar with how Godot handles 3D character models and animations. 
It's janky but serviceable. What I really need is some shoe squeaks for when you're turning in place. I learned how to make a spatial audio system, so things sound a little different depending on the room size and if they're behind a wall from you. It's kind of neat and just adds that extra level of realism. The mall is possibly haunted, and to that end I've messed around a little with having things visible to the cameras that the player can't see, and vice versa. There's some things I'd like to do with that, uh, as well as just some more regular AI crook type behavior that you need to stop. Lastly, we have Freezing Yeti or I think that was the name. This was another Godot Wild Jam, and I'll be honest, this one was tough. The theme this time around was Freeze, and by the time I came onto the team, they had pretty well established that they wanted to do a multiplayer arena freeze tag game. In general, and for several reasons, it's usually not a great idea to do multiplayer in a game jam, but I ended up implementing local multiplayer and got it mostly working. Unfortunately, it was the week before Christmas and I think everybody had better things to be doing. I wouldn't be able to work on the day that the project was due, so I did what programming I could and then left it to the others to finish up. And things got a little weird. Part of what's going on here is there's an invisible running animation going on in the background because when the character model was swapped out for a newer version, the old one wasn't replaced but simply set to invisible which doesn't actually change its running behavior. There's loads of other polish this could have used. In the end, I think 11 people is just too many for a week-long Game Jam team. And that about wraps up the last couple months of 2024. I hope your Hans Yule Kwanzaamas has been happy and or merry. Have a great new year, and uh, yeah, bye.